Amen. Amen. Good morning. Welcome to Calvary Chapel Inland Devo 30. I'm Pastor Ruben. Thank you for joining us today. We stream live on Facebook every Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays at 9 a.m. So if you'd like to join us or check it out later on. We're also at the church, 5383 Martin Street in Harupa Valley. If you'd like to come on by and join us, uh, we'd love to have you here. Today, we will be in the book of Timothy chapter 4. Timothy chapter 4. So I'll give you a moment to get your cup of coffee and your Bible and get situated. And then we will get into chapter 4 here. I want to encourage you to check out my page, my personal page, which this is also on. Um, good morning, Randy. Glad you're watching. Um, and we have a ad for the church. And it's a pretty nice little ad, our first one. We're hoping to do more later on down the road, but we're hoping this will, will draw some attention uh, to our church. But check out that little ad. It's like 31 seconds. And if you can, do a share. I'd like to hit 35 shares. It's at 27. So I'd like, like to do a share on that little ad. Good morning, Diana. Uh, please check out that little ad and, and do a share on that for me, will you? All right, we're in 1 Timothy chapter 4 this morning. 1 Timothy chapter 4. Morning, Patty Weeks. All right, let's go ahead and pray. Uh, gracious Lord, we do come before you, Father. And, and just urgent at this moment, Lord, we want to pray for Pam and Rick, Lord, as they're in the hospital here in Colton. We want to pray for a healing, Lord, and for wisdom for the doctors as they will both be under an operation to, to fix some bones that are broken and mend some some tissue, Lord God. We're praying for your grace and mercy. We're praying, Lord, for the church to rise up, Lord, and to reach out to them, love on them, Lord. We're praying for healing, Lord, in those relationships, Father, that they have. In this situation, Father, that you work out for good, for your glory, Lord. We love them both, and we're just praying for the best, Lord. We ask now, Lord, that you lift up the churches in our community today, Lord, and ask for your grace and mercies upon them. And, Lord, that the gospel would go out. Lord, help us, Lord, as, as a church to stand firm on the truth of God's word, uh, not to teach false doctrine or to approve of it at all, Lord, but to be sincere and gentle and loving as we present the truth in the, which is found in the word of God. And we're going to look at that today, Lord, as we see uh, Paul speaking to Timothy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, Katie. Good morning, Allie. Glad you could join us. We're in 1 Timothy chapter 4. So let's go ahead and get into it. Now, again, the context is important. Um, we say that to our kids when we're directing them, and then they go and complain, and, and then you remind them, look, the context of what I told you is this, and you misunderstood me, and that happens quite often. So context is always important, and communication is always important. And so Paul is writing to Timothy, a pastor of a church in Ephesians. And he's writing to him concerning the issues in a church building there in Ephesus. And so we get a lot of our instructions from 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, and Titus concerning our church, concerning elders, concerning doctrines that are taught in the church because they struggled at that time. And so Paul is trying to, to instruct Timothy and equip him uh, for that work that he's doing there. So he says, now... Verse 1, chapter 4, the Spirit expressly says that in latter times some will depart from the faith. Now he says some. So uh, let's be frank. People are always falling away from the faith. Uh, they come to Jesus Christ, their Lord and Savior, oftentimes for the wrong reasons. They're coming because they want something from God and they don't want God at all. They just want to be blessed. They want to be healed. They want this or that. God is kind of like a genie in a bottle. You rub him and he's going to give you what, what you want because he's God. Uh, when that's far from the truth, uh, you come to God because uh, you're damned. We're going to hell, every one of us, because of our sins. And the only way to get to heaven and not go in the other direction is to accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And so we come to God, first of all and foremost, to receive eternal life. And then once we receive that eternal life, now we ask God, how do we live on this earth? How do we survive as Christians in this culture that we live in? And unfortunately, there's a lot of people that don't survive 
because they're coming to God with the wrong ideas. If we come to God with the right ideas, we'll survive. But unfortunately, there are some, as Paul says, that will fall away from the faith. And notice that they give in to other things, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Uh, deceiving of spirits could be demonic forces that are deceiving them, that are whispering in their ears, or saying this looks a little bit better, it looks like something you might want. Um, or doctrines of demons. A man will come in and they make up a doctrine that people enjoy or like or agree, and so they'll take that doctrine themselves and they'll be attracted to that. Someone said this, and I thought it made sense, concerning uh, all these churches that are in the world today. And there are a lot of churches, denominations, non-denomination. Uh, you have the Calvary chapels that just teach through the Bible and just love giving out the word from Genesis to Revelation. Then you have Baptists that like topical messages. You have um, uh, Amer uh, uh, assemblies of God that are more spiritual. They, they tend to have more of the spiritual gifts. And then you start getting into some weird stuff out there. Um, you get into some cults and other type of churches. Now, someone said this, that the reason that there are so many different churches is because there are different people who are looking for something different. And so the churches are created because of the people's desire to see something different. And it, it, it makes sense because the Bible says that, that men will desire their ears to be scratched or itch. They have itchy ears. They have itchy ears. They want to hear what they want to hear. And so let's say you have two individuals and one individual wants to hear the truth. So he's going to go to a church that teaches the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. You have another individual that says, I don't want to hear that truth. I want to hear something different. I want to hear all about the love of God. That's all I want to hear. All the other stuff, the negative and all that other stuff. I don't want to hear that. Is there a church out there that, that just teaches on the love of God? Well, no, there isn't. Now, I'm just you know, giving you an idea here. So what that person does is he goes to leadership, says, why can't you just teach on the love of God? Well, because we want to teach from Genesis to Revelation. We want to teach on everything. Get a well-balanced meal when we're eating. Well, I don't want that. I want someone that just teaches on the love of God. And then she'll find someone else in leadership and say, will you just teach on the love of God? He says, well, yeah, I'll do that. So then he splits from the church and he starts a church that just teaches on the love of God. And now that person says, hey, if there are anyone else here that's tired of hearing everything, why don't we just hear about the love of God? And so then they'll go to that church and then that church grows because that person's willing to cater to their, their need. And so the church of Olstein wasn't created by Olstein. It was created by the people that wanted that kind of teaching. Think about that for a second. That's why there's a diversity of teachers out there in ministries. It's because the people want to hear those things. Personally, I want to hear the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. I want to hear everything so that I get a balance, so that I know truth. I'm a realist. I want to know what's factual. I, I don't want it made up. I want to know whether it's good or bad. Tell me the truth. That's all I want. I think all of us want truth. But then when we get the truth, we can't handle the truth. <laughs> we don't like the truth. And so we have a tendency to find somewhere else. You know, someone comes along and says, I just want to know about the spiritual things of God. Can we just have someone talk about spiritual things of God? And someone in the church leadership says, I'll do that. How many people you got? Oh, I've got about 10. Okay, I'll split from the church and I'll start a church that just talks about spiritual things of God. You know, and that's usually what happens. And that's what's happening here. Uh, they fall away because of deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. In verse two, he says, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commending to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing is to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer, speaking of the food. Now, I made a little quick list here this morning because we have ministries out there that fall into these categories. For instance, the prosperity doctrine. That is a false doctrine that God has called us all as believers to be prosperous in the world. We should all be very wealthy and rich. And if we have the faith and trust in God, we will be. You know, recently, uh, Benny Hinn, and we all know who Benny Hinn is, he came out and he literally 
did a half an apology and said, maybe I've kind of went too far with the prosperity doctrine. And I want to just confess that maybe I, I went too far to get richer. And, and I apologize for that. Though I still think that God teaches it in the Bible. You know, it was kind of a half an apology, maybe wanting to get a little bit of a different group to join him that said, hey, he's repentive and we still want to be rich too. So let's, let's go to Benny and hear what he has to say. And these are demons of doctrines that, that we were talking about, hypocrisy you know, and so forth, because Jesus was poor. Jesus was poor. He didn't have anything. I have nowhere to lay my head. Nowhere to lay my head. I don't have a home because this isn't my home. So that's a false doctrine. The forbidding to marry. Which religion out there forbids to marry? Is there a religion out there that forbids their ministers to marry, their pastors, their priest? Catholic Church. And there's ministries out there that forbid to marry. That's undoctrinal. The only one that wasn't married was Jesus, God. Paul was married. Peter was married. These are apostles of Jesus Christ. You go to the Old Testament. David was married. Solomon was married. Moses was married. They're all married. You forbid men to marry and you run into situations that we've seen in the past with the Catholic Church, which is devastating. Uh, again, it's another false doctrine that comes in and caters to man. And then the seven-day Adventist. They're the other group. They tell you to abstain from foods. Now, I'm not saying that all seven-day Adventists are occultic, but some of them are, and we have to be careful. So when some church says, uh, I want to abstain from foods, you know, that's the seven-day Adventists. And then you worship on the Sabbath day only. So there are these churches out there. This is true what Paul is saying to Timothy at his time, and it's still true today, that people are falling away from the simplicity of the gospel message. And that is just reading your Bible and just getting into it and letting the Bible speak for as, as it is and then receiving it as truth. Let's go on. And he talks about uh, true teachers. If you instruct the brethren in these things, you will be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished in the word of faith and of good doctrine, which you have carefully followed. So notice that Paul is saying to teach these things. Uh, we live in a world today that says, don't judge. Why are you judging other ministries? You don't have a right to judge. And yet Paul is saying, you're doing a good thing by doing this. In fact, you're a good minister if you, if you teach these things. What things? The things he just said. The things he just talked about. The, the doctrines of demons, the deceiving spirits, the lies and hypocrisy, um, the forbidding in marriage, the, giving of, the, not, the restriction of eating certain foods. And yet Paul is saying, you're a good teacher if you teach about these things. We've lost that, I think, recently. Uh, in the last 10 years or so, I don't see too many apologetists out there anymore who are defending the faith. Um, yes, I agree that some of them have gone beyond and they start getting into every ministry and then nitpicking areas that maybe they shouldn't. Uh, I know that a lot of apologetists came out of Calvary and they went out and they looked at all these prosperity teachers and Joel Osteen's and Benny Hinn and, and the um, um, Satanic Church and, and, and Seven Day. And then all of a sudden they started looking at themselves. Well, where's Calvary? What is Calvary Chapel doing? And they started nitpicking some areas. And so, of course, it's like we now are separated. And I don't see too many apologetics out there anymore that are defending the faith from these various religions. There are some. I'm not saying there's none. But I think that uh, we've lost that because we become too judgmental in the non-essentials. In the non-essentials, we become judgmental. But in the essentials and doctrinal things, we have to be. But non-essentials, we don't necessarily need to be. But you're a good teacher if you do these things. Reject profane and old wise fables and exercise yourself rather to godliness. For bodily exercise profits a little. But godliness is profitable for all things, having promised of the life that now is and of that which is to come. So he, he's saying, you know, be careful that you're not receiving uh, fables, genealogies, people who come in with traditions and things like this that, that are not scripturally based, that are their opinion, that um, sometimes will destruct, destroy the church itself. And so Paul's saying, don't, don't just receive everything. Check it out with the word. 
uh, in fact, exercise your mind in the Word of God. Study to show yourself approved. Uh, he says, not like physical exercise. He's not saying don't do that. He's saying that profits a little, but it's not the main thing is to have physical exercise. I don't know. Maybe they had a gym in Ephesus and, and they were overdoing it, you know. And I remember the, again, back in the 80s, these churches started doing weightlifters, right? And they had these mega weightlifters going to the churches, encouraging the kids, look what I can do, these muscles all over the place. And, you know, and I can't remember what they call them, like something muscle teams or G teams or yeah, something like that. And that became a big issue was all this working out and athletics. And, and Paul is saying that's not important. Not as important as the doctrinal word of God. That's more important than that bodily exercise. He's not saying don't exercise because you should. I think you should. You should be healthy. You should take care of yourself so that you can continue to serve the Lord. So be faithful in those things. Verse 9. This is a faithful saying and worthy to all of all acceptance. For to this end we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God who is the Savior of all men, especially of those who believe. These things command and teach. Okay? So Paul is commanding Timothy to command these to those in the church and to teach these things to them. Let no one despise your youth, but be an example to the believer in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith and in purity. So encouragement to Timothy. He was a young man. And being young, sometimes you um, aren't necessarily respected because you're so young and you don't have the experience. I remember the day that we, uh, we had a grand opening here at the church. I was 33 years old. And um, we had people coming in from, from other ministries to do worship and, and, and different things. Uh, and I remember one group came in and they said, where's the pastor? And I said, I'm the pastor. And they looked at me like, you're too young to be the pastor. I said, I'm 33 years old. Jesus was 33 when he went to the cross. So I think I'm not too young to be a pastor. Now, looking back, I can say, yeah, I was kind of young for, to be a pastor at that time. And I didn't have the wisdom. I didn't have the knowledge of ministry. I would have done things a lot differently if I did. Uh, but... That's probably what's happening with Timothy. You're a young kid. So, so Paul's saying, don't let anyone despise your youth. But don't, you know, don't attack them. You know, just, just be an example to them by your conduct, by your love, by your spirit, by your faith, and even by your life and purity. Uh, and then he says, till I come, give attention to reading, to reading, to exhortation, and to doctrine. What do you think he's talking about when he says to reading? Bible. The Bible. Make sure you're reading the Bible. Make sure you're reading it to your congregation. You know, Wednesday night, I did something a little different. <clears throat> I went through the Bible in, in chapter 28 of Exodus, and I just kind of read it, and then just touched on a few things. And then at the end, I did three points. Just reading it, just reading through it was probably more important than my three points. Because the Word of God is powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. It is able to discern the heart of a man. It's able to get into between the joints, the bones, the marrow, and really tell you where your heart is. It's reflective. It tells you who you are and where your faults are and where you need to change. Just the Word of God. Now, the topical part of it, when I gave my three points, who is Jesus? You know, Jesus the high priest, and then we're priest. Those are three points. They're biblical. Uh, hopefully, I... I did a good job. They're not exhaustive, but hopefully I did a good job to give you an idea that Jesus is God and it's taught throughout the Bible. But even within that point, you can kind of miss things here and there because there's so much more than just Jesus is God, that Jesus walked among us as a man, but you can't exhaust that. And so going through and just reading the Bible is so good for you. So you get a balance of everything that's happening, uh, scripturally speaking. So read your Bible, he's saying, Timothy, to the church. Uh, then exhort. <clears throat> this is a struggle in the church today. I really believe it's part of, the, part of the end times for a pastor to exhort. You know, uh, people don't receive it anymore. At least in our church, and I've seen in other churches where, where and, and I'm talking about a few, not a whole lot, but it's hard to exhort people because they're volunteers, first of all. I don't really get paid here. I'm not an employee, so... You know, I think that you trying to get me to do something really isn't going to work. You're asking us to do something that some employee should be doing. 
exhorting them to be faithful to ministry, exhorting them. Exhortation means everything, right? And that's encouraging them to be faithful, encouraging them to fulfill, encouraging them to be loyal. All these things that we've, we've been talking about, <clears throat> exhorting them to do that. And yet people are that mindset, well, we're a business and you don't pay us, so we really don't have to you know, do those things. I think we're greater than a business, aren't we? We're the, we're the body of the living Christ. We're in a ministry that's beyond business, beyond corporations. This, this is the kingdom of God, and we lose sight of that. And in the kingdom of God, we don't get paid. You don't hear of anyone getting paid except who? The priest and the ministers. Everybody else does it with volunteers. When that tabernacle was moved, who moved it? All the people did. Not just the, sorry, priests, you guys do. That's your job. You know? No, they all moved it. And when they needed resources to take care of the tabernacle, who's the one that gave resources? Everybody did, including the priest. It's biblical. And so it's be, this is bigger than a business. And we need to stop that mindset and, and let those in leadership exhort you to do good things. Uh, to doctrine. And again, doctrine is uh, good teaching on, on doctrinal things. And let's close up. Do not neglect the gift that is in you, Timothy, which was given to you by prophecy with the laying on of hands of the, of the presbyteries. Meditate on these things. Give yourself entirely to them that your progress may be evident to all. Take heed to yourself and to the doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this, you shall save both yourself and those who hear you. Those who hear you, Timothy. So, Timothy, be faithful, continue studying the word of God, continue to share the doctrines, continue to teach the truth, don't let anyone stop you, and when you do these things, you'll be a faithful minister, uh, you will save yourself, and you'll also save those who hear you, who hear you, and that's important, because he saves himself, obviously, salvation has to come to ourselves first, we have to be first saved, we have to understand that I need salvation um, and once I'm saved by believing the word of God and what Jesus did on the cross, now share that with others. And then hopefully if others agree with your word, you know, then they get saved too. You know, this concept again, but I'm not supposed to follow you. I'm supposed to follow man. <clears throat> I get that all the time now when someone disagrees with me. Oh, I'm not supposed to follow you. I'm supposed to follow God, not man. I go, well, yeah, you're right when it comes to false doctrines. But when it comes to the church and the function of the church and the conduct within the church, you're supposed to follow me and how God is leading me. That's biblical. And in fact, in, in Hebrews 13, verse 7 says, Remember those who rule over you, who have spoken the word of God to you, whose faith follows. Consider the outcome of their conduct. Because Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He still rules the same way. He has leaders that's leading for him. Again, Noah, David, Moses, Joshua. Joshua, wherever you go, we will go. Whatever you do, we will do. They were faithful to these men as these men were following God. Then he goes on in verse 17 in Hebrews 13. Obey those who rule over you and be submissive for they watch out for your souls. So no one, no one wants leadership in churches to watch out for their, their souls. But this is what the Bible teaches. As those who want to give an account, let them do so with joy and not with grief. For that would be unprofitable for you. And there are people that, that really fight against leadership because they want to see things done their way. And leadership won't, won't give in sometimes. And Paul, Pete, uh, Timothy is not supposed to give in. He's supposed to stick with the doctrines. He's supposed to teach the word of God and not give in to man and be that leader that God has called him to be. And if he doesn't, if he does that, then he is a well minister. Unfortunately, people don't want that. And so they will keep themselves teachers to itch their ears and teach doctrines that they want to hear. You know, and what we want to do as Paul said in Hebrews 13 that we want ministers to follow and to obey because obey them or submit unto them because they want watch out for our souls. God has entrusted them 
uh, with us. And we want to be pleasing to the Lord. And if we rebel, then that's going to be an issue for us to deal with and not the ministers. Because it's us that is rebelling. So, so Timothy has a hard job. It's a lonely job. But somebody's got to do it. And God's called Timothy to do it. And so Timothy's going to do a good job. So, and he's doing a wonderful job so far. So we're going to see uh, next week. We'll, we'll look at chapter 5. Let's pray. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you. May you bless your people. May this be a wonderful weekend for them, Lord. Uh, may you um, minister to their hearts as they go to church, as they serve in your kingdom, Lord, as they're doing things with their families, Father. And may your grace and mercies follow them, Lord God, wherever they go this weekend, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you guys. Thank you for watching the video. If you could, please share it on your wall. Maybe someone will hear it and be touched by it. God bless.